Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kiki and Kippets. It's me, Mary, and I am here today a little late with Love at the Lockup, Season 5, Episode 32, Runaway Fiance. First of all, I'm going to warn you guys in advance. I feel like crap. I have a summer cold. My ear is all stuffy. Um, secondly, I know I'm late with the recap and I'm by myself. I don't have a co-host. I apologize. If you haven't checked out my interviews with Zaria and Troy and Shantae and True, please do. Um, let's get right into this recap, partially because my ear is all stuffy and I can barely hear myself. So first of all, Zaria and Troy, her psychic, we leave off for her psychic telling her that this is a horrible, horrible idea, okay? Her psychic pulls out the heartbreak card. And I ask her about her psychic and her religious beliefs and all that during our interview. So go check it out. So then Troy calls her and is like, hi, babe. I'm so excited. This time tomorrow, I'm going to be free. So how was your reading? And she's like, oh, everything is great, babe. Even though she's like crying because, you know, her psychic is telling her that if she wants peace, that this relationship is not a good idea. So now it's the morning of to pick up her man. Her brother's going to drive her. Her parents are going to be there. It's a real family affair. Okay. So she's, you know, getting everything together. The money bouquet, you know, everything is all, all ready to go. So, um, it turns out that he's getting released to his parole officer, which is kind of weird, okay? E even the CO in the prison who's been there for over 20 years never saw anything like this, okay? So Troy's getting really annoyed. You know, he wants to get out already. Like, what the fuck is going on? Why are they fucking with him, okay? So Rhea's out there. Her parents are out there. Everybody's waiting for him. And then suddenly... It's like, oh, there he goes. He's in the PO's car. So now Zaria and her brother and Zaria's parents are all driving. And then it turns into a fucking high-speed chase. Yeah, all of a sudden, this, this shit turns into a high-speed chase. Zaria's nerves are like out the fucking window, okay? She's like sweating so much that she has to keep powdering her face. Her brother's like, what the fuck is happening, okay? So, um, they like travel all through like fucking Syracuse and they get to like to the PO building. So Zaria's like, let's stand here next to the parole officer's car. So this way, when he comes out of the building, he'll be able to see us. And her father's like, they got their pound of flesh and let him go already. So that's where we leave off. The fuck is going on? Why didn't they release Troy to Zaria and, and, you know, her family? And that's where we are. Next, we move on to Kim and Joey. So last week, Joey got a message from some chick, Ashley, that Kim was all hugging up on some light-skinned dude and fucking around with her husband. So Joey's like, are you fucking anybody else? And Kim is like, hells no. And the dude that I was possibly hugging up on was um, my friends. I went out to some brewery and the, uh, some friend posted the picture. And he's like, well, I don't want you hugging up on any dudes because you wouldn't like me hugging up on any chicks. And so Kim says that he has an ex that um, he dated like 20 years ago that is obsessed and wants to break them up. And she will do anything to break them up. So Kim, you know, has to make sure that this chick, you know, won't break them up, basically. So now Kim is going to go get her nails done by her cousin Tatum. Tatum doesn't know that she's dating Joey. And for good reason. Because Tatum used to date Joey back in the day. Tatum actually lost her virginity to Joey. Joey cheated on Tatum with Kim. 
So Tatum is doing Kim's nails and she's asking her about her divorce. And she's like, yeah, my divorce should be final in a couple of months. And then she drops the bomb that she's dating Joey. And Tatum's like, what? Are you kidding me? And then Kim drops the bomb that Joey cheated on Tatum all those years ago with Kim. If I was Tatum, I would have purposely cut her cuticles with that file or like taken the cuticle cutter and purposely cut her finger or something, okay? It's like, what the fuck? So anyway, Tatum's not happy. And she tells Kim, you know, if he cheated on me, I'm sure he cheated on a whole bunch of chicks. What makes you think that he's not going to cheat on you? And Kim's like, no, you know, he's changed. He loves me. Okay. So now we have True and Shantae. And I'm sorry, guys. I know this this recap is half-assed, but I, my head is really pounding. So he's out, okay? They're in the car. He's holding on to the balloons. First thing he says is, I want to take a bath. I just want to soak in water. And Shantae's like, real life, you think the both of us are going to fit in the bathtub? They release the balloons, okay? They go out to lunch with his sister and his ne nephew and his niece. He has a jalapeno burger, okay? He says everything is weird right now because um, it's like on TV. He used to watch on TV. You know, he used to watch TV when he was in his cell, and now he feels like that he stepped on, you know, to the TV. So um, he's like trying to be careful not to get paranoid and shit, you know, because he's heard of that happening to other people when they've been in prison for so long and then they're released. It's like, you know, like they start getting paranoid and shit. Now, on top of all the other money Shantae has spent on him, the clothes and jewelry are $2,500 on top of that. I asked her about the money during the interview, so check it out. Now they're going to the sex shop. I asked them about that. And um, she just wants to check it out because things have gotten a lot more advanced since he's been away. The last time he had sex was when he was 17 years old with 22 females. And um, the look on his face in the sex shop for some of the things, especially the penis, penis pump, classic. Shantae is totally uncomfortable in the sex shop, okay? You could tell she was like, let me the fuck out of here, okay? So now they spend $200 in the sex shop. And mind you, Shantae doesn't have a job. And he doesn't know that she doesn't have a job. And he's living, she's living off of her savings. And she doesn't want to tell him yet. That she lost her job because you know he just came out and she doesn't want to throw all that stuff on him yet. Hi. So now they get to the Airbnb that she rented for a week. Did I mention she doesn't have a job? And um, you know, she wants to spend a week with him to test trial their relationship, I guess. And true is like Goldilocks trying out the beds. Okay, and Shantae is like laughing at him because he's in awe over the littlest things. And he's like jumping on all the beds and he loves the soft bed. Okay, so now Shantae is like, what the fuck did I get myself into? She hasn't had sex in five years. He hasn't had sex in 13. And he is ready. Okay, he is ready. So he grabs her, takes her into the bathroom and... They have a great night. She wakes up the next morning, and he's gone. And in typical dramatic fashion, I bet you he went to go get bagels or some shit. So, okay, moving on, we have Author and Hope. And if you guys haven't heard it already, Starcasm reported that Author is back in jail. So, he was 18 when he first started going to prison, and it was just a thrill of robbery. Okay, so um, his mother is like, if I tell him to go back to Vegas with me, 
he's going to go back to Vegas with me, okay? Because that is my baby boy. So whatever Hope thinks, whatever, you know, holds Hope thinks that she has over him, that is my baby boy, and he's going to go back with me, okay? So um, they're going to go to lunch, and Mom is like, you want to ride with me? And he's like, no, I'm going to go ride with Hope in the truck. They get in the truck. Hope, Hope has the back of the truck all decorated for him and whatever. Her author's like, I love Hope. She is totally my type physically. She is a beautiful person inside and out. They get to the restaurant and author's mom is like, you're staying in the truck tonight? And he's like, yeah. And Hope is like, you know, to me, it's kind of like she's implying that her son is too good for the truck. And Hope, you know, author's mom says that she's never seen her son stick up for a woman like he does for hope and she feels like he does it because he feels like he's obligated because she supported him you know gave, gave him money all those years that he was in prison and she feels like that he shouldn't feel obligated to her so hope is like but where were you guys all those years and author's mom's like we were there but after a while it gets hard because you know we get excited that he comes out he paroles we think everything's going to be good and then he goes back in again and you know his mom was like i've been there from the beginning i've been putting money on the commissary putting money on the phone from the beginning and as i'm listening to her and you know knowing that he, he's back in jail right now i'm just like I'm, I'm really feeling it for her and she's like you know i have other kids i have a life and it gets expensive after a while and i did it for as long as i can but that doesn't mean that we didn't miss him that we don't love him you know so all this you know he he starts to tear up he hugs his mama he's like i love you mama hope is just sitting there you know and honestly, I wonder if hope is consistent this time around. You know, I mean, I feel for his mama. That's all I have to say. And what the fuck is up with the triangle on his forehead? Okay? The fuck is up with the triangle? And the scene really upset me this time around, knowing that he's back in jail. Okay? So now we have Julian and Christine. And I'm sorry, these two remind me of Chaz and Brandwin. I said it. He is an author of writing a book. The main character is on death row. So he decided to reach out to a prisoner to, for research, for, you know, um, prison lingo, prison culture, things of the sort. So he found Christine, okay? And... Um, Christine is a bank robber. She robbed six banks for $10,000. I don't think that makes her a really successful bank robber, but that's just me. Okay, so um, Julian is a Pentecostal whose body count is three. Christine is an atheist, okay? Um, she is in prison right now at um, the Martha Stewart prison. Can't camp cupcake on a parole violation okay and um julian is there for her julian has her cat chuck uh what is the cat's name chucky bonkers okay and um it's the final countdown he's going to pick her up with chucky bonkers and um they're gonna live happily ever after christine is uh quite a character her jaw, don't know what's up with it. I, I, I kind of got motion sickness looking at her jaw. Um, she she says that she gained 30 pounds while she was in prison. She practically tackled him. Well, she did tackle him when she came out. They were rolling around in the grass. Um, she says men come out looking buff and women come out looking like buffalo. Uh, let's see, what else? 
She hopes to marry Julian and ride off into the sunset, but she admits that this may be a little rough ride. So we're going to see with these two. So that's basically it. So thank you guys for watching me. Uh, please check out my interviews if you haven't already. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button and share my video with a friend of 10. Thank you so much. See you next week. Bye, everyone.